Welcome to the Healing Place podcast, a space filled with inspirational stories of hope, along with practical advice for your healing journey. Your host is Terry Welbrock, trauma warrior, writer, speaker, blogger, therapy dog handler, and founder of the Sammy's Bundles of Hope Project. As a survivor and a thriver, Terry's mission is to shine the light of hope into the world by interviewing insightful guests from across the globe. Please stay tuned at the end of today's interview as we honor our sponsors. The Healing Place podcast is a fiscally sponsored project of Fractured Atlas. Now, here's your host and trauma warrior, Terry Welbrock. Welcome, everybody, to the Healing Place podcast. I'm your host, Terry Welbrock, and very excited to have with me today Kira Polson, who is inspirational speaker, intuitive, energetic healer, and mom to five amazing children. So welcome, Kira. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And, and yeah, I'm so excited. I told you right before I hit record, <laughs> there's just so much that I want to talk to you about today and, and just dive into. And one of the things we want to start with is spiritual entrepreneur. So yeah, can you tell people who you are and what you do? Yeah. So I have been a healer for a very long time. And I also found that I have this crazy love for business. Like it's just something I so deeply enjoy. And I found that most of the healers and light workers and light leaders that I knew, authors, coaches, they couldn't actually get their business successful. And what I found was it's because it wasn't in the language that their soul understood, which is why I created the spiritual entrepreneurship program, because it's like a translator. It translates the language of business into the language of spirituality for those who are spiritual beings so that they can find success. And it's just something I'm so passionate about. I could talk about it all day long. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I love, I mean, I consider myself a light worker. I had a friend years ago say to me, sitting in our tiki hut outside and she said Terry you know you're a light worker and I was what the heck is that and then the more I researched it and I thought oh my gosh what an honor to to feel that uh that calling and so yeah what a gift you're offering to the light workers and, and spiritual beings of the world yeah I I have this vision and when I was creating the spiritual entrepreneur I I saw the words, a sacred revolution within leadership and business. And I saw that if all the healers and all the light workers and all the leaders who were guided to bring light to this world found success in their business, that would be the new realm of leadership. That would be a new wave that happened on this earth. And so that's why I get so passionate about helping these leaders of light create success in their business. Beautiful. I got goosebumps on my head when you said that. <laughs> Isn't so it beautiful? Cool. When that came in, I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that is beautiful. I love it. So, well, and one of the things I know me personally, and I don't know if this is something you touch upon, but there's there's a sense of um, of guilt for wanting to to make a business out of the spiritual work of, of wanting mm. to make money off of helping people. But, you know, there's still bills. There's still, you have to survive, but I, I, there's this part of me that just wants to give it to the world. Hence the podcast and the newsletter and the, the resource library on my website. But then there's that guilt. Is that what you're helping people yes. with as well? Yes, it's so huge. And I actually have a whole class in the spiritual entrepreneur program called unraveling the truth about business. And it has like a deep healing meditation and there's journal of prompts and there's all these things because this is the piece we have to clear out because the reality is, is if you are making money, that means you are serving right? So the more money I make from my business, the more people I'm impacting. And there's something really interesting that I've seen as I've done a bunch of different offerings in my business. The ones that I offer for free or really low priced the people don't take the class. I slap two grand on a course and every person shows up to every class. So it has nothing to do with me making money off of my, my gifts. It has everything to do with what's going to get people to participate. And it's always when they've got a little bit of skin in the game. 
They've got to put something in to show up. And so when you start to view business in that way, like I'm actually not serving when I charge $59 for a course because a thousand people might sign up, 10 are taking it. I can view 10 people are taking it. How many times have you bought something for $27.99? You're like, I'm going to go back and take that. And you're like, never took the class. But if you, if you spent a few thousand dollars, you don't miss a class. You don't miss a Zoom call. You are committed, right? Yes. And that's, that's what we want to shift for these healers is like, no, you're not making money off your gifts. You're serving by charging money because now people are going to get impacted. Yeah. Beautiful way to look at it. Yes. And so mm-hmm. true. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, it is. It's true. So, what is this? What is the program? I mean, what this is it a coaching? Is it a course? So, I like to think of it like um, an all inclusive trip, right? If you were to go to Cancun on all inclusive, everything is included. You like pay one price and everything is there. It's like going to Disneyland. That's how I feel this is. I have everything in this course from my Awaken practice, which is a 12-week course on how to do a daily healing protocol. This is essential for a successful business. If you can do daily healing work on yourself, you're not going to get in the way. You're not going to get tripped up by self-doubt. You're not going to get tripped up by fear because you can just do healing work through it, right? right? So it's got the healing work and then it's got, I don't know, 10, 15 classes on the spiritual tools. Cause I have a lot of weird tools. They're like the things that like, I'm very ritual. I'm very like sacred space and talking with God, letting God guide my business, allowing the divine to be a part of my business, my work. So I have all these tools to help navigate business spiritually. And then I have a third part, which is all the business tools. So if you want to write a, write a book and you want to publish it, I actually have a whole class on how to spiritually write a book and what's the business around it. And I own a publishing company. So you automatically get a discount and you can publish your book through my company, Freedom House. And then I've got a whole class on how to launch a podcast. How do you spiritually create a podcast? How do you launch a podcast? And because I know so many spiritual beings struggle with tech, I Zoom call the videos of me showing them how to upload their video to Libsyn, how to get the show notes on. Like it is like, I mean, I have five kids, so I know how to step-by-step teach things very simply because I've had to do that with my kids. And so I just do that in this course, like tech, so simple. Then I have a whole class on how to write a digital course spiritually and business-wise, how do we launch it into the world? How do you get your videos how do you shoot videos? So I have a whole class on how to shoot videos, edit videos, put your videos into your member course. Like everything you could ever need is in this course. Plus you get two coaching calls a month with this group of women who are just amazing. Like women are launching books, launching podcasts, launching courses, retreats. They're just doing so many high action things spiritually. Yes. So we meet, we have a Facebook group. People are in it all day long sharing what they're doing. It's just, it's everything to fully support light leaders in the success of their work. Yeah. I love it. And I love everything that you've said. And I, there's now I want to go sign up for that. <laughs> it's Especially so fun. The, the course part. I love that idea. I mean, that's just, that's next on my list is to create a course, but an yeah. interesting that you said about the uh, podcast um, showing someone how to become because I, I had talked to somebody that was referred to me um, by a previous podcast guest and this person reached out and said, you really need, and she's a medium. And she said, you really need to create a, something that shows people how to create a podcast because you've done this, you've walked through it. And I was laying in bed last night, how crazy and thinking if I did that, I'd have to show them like, like on a share screen, like how to go to this, how to upload here, <laughs> how to create the blog, how to, and that's so funny. You said it. So I love it. Yeah. I love that you're yeah. doing it. Yeah. It's so, it's so needed because I realized, cause I, I created this course because I was one-on-one coaching with so many women and in our coaching calls, I would be telling them how to be setting up a podcast. And I was like, Oh, 
this is horrible. I don't want to be spending my time doing this. I want to be coaching them. And that's when I was like, oh, I've got to make a course that I can send everybody to the video so that when I'm coaching, we're like deep dive doing amazing work, not just this technical stuff right. that they're going to really want to rewatch. So that's what created the spiritual entrepreneur was just having better resources for yeah. my clients. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love it. One of the words you mentioned or two words was sacred space. And I love mm -hmm. that um, idea. I, I talk all the time. As, as a matter of fact, in my invitation that I had sent out um, to you, I talk about, I record from my sacred space. <laughs> it's just the space I've created for myself that, that's surrounding. You can't see what I look at. Um, yeah but there's just so much inspiration and beauty and hearts and all the things that uh, inspire me is so is the sacred space, a physical space that you create, or are you talking about sacred space within your being? So I actually have a seven day class within the spiritual entrepreneur, or people can just actually go to my website and get the seven day sacred space class. It's super cheap and it's amazing. It's the groundwork of everything. So any client who starts with me, anybody who starts a spiritual entrepreneur have to go through that class because it is about finding a physical place in your home or on your land, how to spiritually dedicate it. So I, I teach how to spiritually clean it, how to spiritually dedicate it to the work of communing with the divine, how to put things in it that you love. And, and I tell everybody, like my, we moved to this tiny house in Idaho so we could live on land. And I didn't have a space for sacred space. So I did it in the middle of a grove every day of my life until it got too cold. And then I parked it in the middle of our pantry. And you know what? I love it. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter if you have like a guest room, like literally my crystals, everything is in the back of the pantry and it's the best thing in the world. You just have to have a place that's, that's safe, that's dedicated to the sacred work. Yes. I love that idea. I just got the hiccup. Sorry. Just <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> if suddenly I'm doing that, <laughs> it, might have, it might have been a one time. <laughs> but it, I mean, the pantry that just sounds cozy. It sounds comfortable. <sighs> it sounds yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Awesome. All right. So you have a book that we're going to yeah. talk about a little bit. Uh, Rise and awaken, but there's more to the title. So what is that? Yes. It's called Rise Up and Awaken oh, to the up. Joy of Being Human. And it actually, it's right now, it started in a Kickstarter. <laughs> and as a true entrepreneur, this morning I woke up in my sacred space and the divine showed me it is not being printed at the right location. So I'm actually stopping the Kickstarter and it will launch again in January. So the book will be available in January. It's, it's a journal. And that's why it's, it needs to be printed at the right location because, oh, guys, it's so beautiful. I hired this ar artist who's just magic. And so every page in this book is created to actually activate joy in your cells. So just looking at the pages, I want it to bring back memories of joy. So there's all these amazing images that people have all had that's going to help them remember joy. There's all these beautiful poems. and then. There's a guide at the beginning, chapter one through six, that teach the principles of how to rewire your brain from suffering to activating joy. And then there's a whole 30 days of morning and evening journal prompts and mantras that are actually designed to help you let go of suffering and start to create the new patterns in your brain to feel joy every day. Beautiful. I, I've talked about it often on this show and brain plasticity and that rewiring and uh, what just what a gift. Forever I thought I was broken and not fixable and till I came across, well, EMDR therapy, but also brain Thank plasticity. You. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is where the hope lies because we can rewire those neuron pathways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, EMDR was my saving grace as well. I mm. so grateful for that, uh, that format of healing. And, and so this book, I, I told you, I had just published it this week, but then I, I'm really following the guidance I'm receiving that I want it to be in the most beautiful packaging for people. There's something about the care, right? Like, so 
one time I went to this retreat and it was for survivors of sexual abuse because that was something that I dealt with as a child. So I went to this retreat for survivors. And I remember that it was in the, it was in the details. It was in like the softness of the sheets, the softness of the blankets, the flowers that they laid out for us, like the slippers that were given. Like it wasn't the, we were staying in this mansion. I mean, it looked like it was, you know, for movie stars. So yes, we're in this grand place. It wasn't the grandness. It was the details where I felt so loved. And, and it taught me that when I'm trying to help people feel better and help them feel joy, it's going to be in the details. And that's why I'm being so particular with how it's printed because I want people to feel that, that every page was really created for them to feel love. Yes. And for those of us who have been through trauma and trauma history, that it, it's so critical and so important to just feel that, I don't know, that embrace. It can be the embrace of a website. It can be the embrace of, yes, this beautiful journal you're putting out. Um, but it does make a difference. It really, it really, really does. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. I'm so excited. I, I have very little, I'm not very patient. So it's very hard for me when this dropped in, in my sacred space today, I did argue with God. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Why didn't this come in two weeks ago when I was launching this Kickstarter? <laughs> and then I just dropped back into like, and everything happens in the perfect way and in the perfect time. Yes. Yeah, I just said that about my book. Like I've been on kicking myself, like, oh my gosh, why haven't you gotten this done in five years? But it's all it's all in the timing and it's beautiful. So and I love it that you're so in tune with um yes, I'll I'll occasionally feel that that little nudge and uh pay attention, but I need to be more cognizant of so so you teach people how to be more in tune and in touch with that. I would say that is the basis of my purpose. Like I don't, I don't market my spiritual entrepreneur on that basis. Like I'm going to teach you how to hear the divine, but that is a thousand percent. My purpose is to help people really be able to, to tune in at all the times. And, and it comes through the spiritual tools that I teach because they're so, so powerful as well as the healing practice. I watch as women start this, it's just a 10 minute daily healing practice through the chakras. It's very simple. It's not like some crazy healing thing that you have to like figure out. It's very simple, but it's so interesting. That's the result that happens because as they start to tune in inside, start to clear out their chakras on their own, they begin to open up this inner voice. And it's through the inner voice that we receive from the divine. So the more we get that voice, like we become confident in that voice that we can just receive all day long. It's just the confidence that we need to gain. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I know my, for myself, I find hearts everywhere. I just, mm. well, I'll, I'll be taking my power walk this morning, walking through a park and look down and there's a, a leaf just laying there like a crumpled brown. It's not a leaf that was shaped that way. And it just happens to me. And I'm always like, Oh my gosh, hi God. It, but right? it, it's my reminder that I'm doing all of this from a place of love and to, mm. to, and, and it just, keeps me and I, I find them more when I'm off track a little bit. <laughs> and it's kind of, again, my little like, Hey, <laughs> remember. Yeah. 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 I I have that with numbers. So I will get, I'll feel like maybe overwhelmed. And then all of a sudden I just have this urge to look down at the clock and it'll be two, two, two. And it's like a, Oh, Hey, Kira, we got you. Like just, just surrender into the trust. Or I'll have like a really strong inspiration to do something. And at that moment, I happen to see a clock and it'll be like 11, 11. And I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. All right. I've got, it's like, it's kind of like a backup team. Like, hey, yep, yep. We're right here. Keep going. You know? I love it. And and I have also done the number thing where I see the repetition of the numbers. And I just, again, I, I've felt the same thing. Kind of like the angels are like, okay, come on. That's right. Stay in that direction. <laughs> I love it. Mm. All right. So, um, yeah. Anything else that you wanted to touch upon? <sighs> Let me sit for a second and see. I love where, where we've gone. I think 
this is what's coming to me is I think what happens is that a lot of light leaders, a lot of healers, a lot of very gifted beings who are here to make a difference in the world don't see themselves as gifted beings. And this is something that I like to teach the women who start to coach with me. They say, well, I don't know what my gifts are. I don't know what I really have to do in this world. And I always just share with them, well, what are the things that are easiest for you? Like what comes super easy? And for example, one woman was just like, well, like I just, you know, I can see magic in every child. Like I just see it. People can bring me like really, really hard kids. And I just, I see what's in them. I see the magic and I can help their parents, you know, see it. She's like, but that's so easy. Everybody has that. And that's the sentence. Whenever somebody says, but that's so easy, everybody can do that. That's actually your gift. And it feels so easy because it's your gift. And you think, why would anyone want this? Like everybody should do this. But the truth is, is that not very many people can. And that's where we build your courses from. That's what we build your books from. We build off of your innate divine genius. And then it's so easy. That's why everybody who runs through my course, they leave with multiple offerings. And it's because we're never going against the grain. We're always building through what's the easiest because that's where their gifts lie. So if anyone's listening and they're like, but I don't have anything to offer, go backtrack and think about what are the things that are so simple for you that you think no one would buy this and know that's your gifts. Yeah. I love innate divine genius. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. That was how, um, for the longest time, cause a lot of my work is I just clear a lot of darkness out with light and, um, I can actually just go in and just clear some stuff out of people's bodies really quick. And I was like, everybody can do this. This is stupid. Why would I teach this to anybody? This is like the easiest thing ever. And then that's when I realized like, Oh wait, that's actually just my gift. This is my gift because it feels so easy. It feels like breathing to me. Like it makes so much sense to my brain. This is what I'm here to teach people. And that's when I really got like, oh, this is how we find our gifts. But it's like it's hidden. It's hidden from us because it feels so simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. We got my head spinning. I'm just sitting here <laughs> talking a little bit because uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, all these things that I do. And yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. We think wow. things have to be hard, right? We're like, if I'm going to be successful, like one of the things that um, I'll share women who've been in my program, they're about to launch a podcast and like, oh, first episode is so hard. I need to do all this research and I have to do all this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No, we're doing zero research. <laughs> you know everything about that topic. All you have to do is connect into the divine, call in your angels, and sit down with a mic and just see what happens. And whenever they do that model, they're like, that was weird. That was like the easiest thing I've ever done. I'm like, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. We think it has to be hard, right? We're like, oh, I got to go get a life coaching degree. No, no. Like, you know what you're doing. You've been life coaching people your whole entire life. Yeah. All you got to do is start doing it now. <laughs> you know, it's like we make things so hard. And really, when we work with the divine, everything's so easy. It just yeah. is. Yeah. I, I say I have a PhD in street cred. <laughs> Amen. 100%. Right. Yeah. You've walked through trauma. You've walked through hard things. You have more credibility than anybody who went to school to learn about trauma. <laughs> like you've been your everybody's life experiences is their qualifications for what they're here to do. Yes. Yeah. I love it. That's amazing and beautiful and wonderful. And I keep saying, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> but it's so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Wonderful. Okay. So how do, how do people get a hold of you? Where do they find you? So I will say the fastest way is just if they want to DM me on Instagram, my name is Kira Polson, K-E-I-R-A-P-O-U-L-S-E-N, fastest way. My website is beautiful. 
It's kierpolson.com. And because I am a high creator, it is definitely never up to date. I, I have new <laughs> things coming out all the time. I need to just hire someone who just always updates it. But if they go to it, it's going to be lovely. You're going to feel good when you look at that website. It's not going to have anything that you want to know on it. <laughs> so just DM me on Instagram. I have all these links on my Instagram. Um, they can even email me at contact at kierpolson.com. Super easy. Awesome. Well, you're, yeah. you're so much more in touch than I am because I, I have an Instagram page, but like I'll, I'll pop things on once a month or, <laughs> and, and Twitter don't even, don't even ask me to get started no. because yeah, no. my middle, my middle child is mom, you don't put hashtags on Twitter. It's like, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I will say Instagram is just so simple for me because it's such, it's, and, and I actually have a whole class on how to spiritually create social media because I believe we, in not playing the games, I believe that social media is just like our place of giving. It's the place where whenever God gives me direct inspiration, that's where I get to go and share it. It's the place where I get to bring the light through. So it's a, it's a holy place for me. It's not it's not what most people experience social media to be. So it's a really nice experience. Yeah. And I'm sure that comes through on your posts uh, is that it's not a sales pitch. It's yeah. It's inspiration yeah. to, to shine that light of hope. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Cool. All right. Well, how are we on time? Oh my gosh, we're doing pretty good. We still have like five minutes. If there's anything else that you want to uh, want to tap into, <laughs> you know something. So okay, so I want to talk a little bit about Freedom House. So it's my publishing company that I created, and there is a website for that. That's freedomhousepublishingco.com, and. I feel really passionate about this company because I am dedicated to only publishing books of light, healing books, self-help, anything that's going to actually bring light into the world. And so what that does is it, it means that when people join this publishing house, when they bring their books through, they're joining like this massive movement of light. They're like among other light leaders. And I know a lot of people feel the nudge to write a book. And then their brain comes in and they're like, oh, I can't do it. Who am I to write a book? I, you know, I remember when my first book came in three years ago, I was like, who am I to write a book? I've never wanted to be an author in my life. And that book was the beginning of so many miraculous events. It was my first time like co-writing with God. And that's why I like to tell people, if you feel the nudge, Start meeting with God, like start spending some time asking what the book needs to be saying, and you will have one of the most sacred experiences channeling through a book. And I, I feel like everyone, like, it changes the way life works. Now you know how to channel things through, and that means you can then channel a course, you can channel anything that needs to come through because you've, you've built that muscle. So anyone who's listening, if there's a book inside of you and you felt it like tapping on your shoulder, I'm going to invite you to spend some time with the divine, ask what the book needs to be about, and watch the book come alive. And then come to me over at Freedom House. Tell me you came from this podcast. I'll give you a discount so that you can get your book in your hands because it's just Nothing's, nothing's more fun than holding your book. It's the best. I'm so excited. And I have to add to that, and it's a little exclamation point. So I'm writing this book, as I've talked about mm -hmm. often in these three years of the podcast. And uh, I was struggling. Oh, I really need a title for this book. And so I had my feet up on my desk, and I just um, sent up a prayer to the Holy Spirit and said, I really need some inspiration for a title for this book. And instantaneously, I had a vision in my head and I was, oh my gosh. And I ran and got my daughter who was um, about 11 at the time and said, I need you to be my model for just a second and grabbed a lamp, took the lampshade off mm -hmm. and said, I need you to kneel on the ground and put your hands as if you're praying like this. And I shine the light on her and well, I ended up taking a picture and sure enough. So the title of my book is Unicorn Shadows. Um, from from trauma to triumph, a healing guide, and wow. what it is is that it's the image was this little girl who's terrified 
down on her knees, just begging God to please make the pain stop. And as God's light shined on her, a unicorn shadow was cast on the oh. wall behind her. And so that was, I get goosies. I've got goosies I did too. again I talking know. about it. So, oh my gosh, they're all over me now. But yeah, I mean, that, that was one of those. I just, I just gave it to God and said, I need some help with this. And so, and there it came to me and um, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> and, and that is actually, that's exactly what I teach. The spiritual aspect of writing a book is that. I mean, I had the exact same experience when I was first, I knew I was supposed to write a book three years ago and I was like, all right, God, what is this supposed to be? I don't know. And I just done like, oh my gosh, the deepest EMDR therapy for months. And I was like, I'm not writing about that. So show me something else, God. And then one day I was driving down the road and out of nowhere, a vision appeared in my mind from the top down. I saw the title, the hidden gifts within the trauma of sexual abuse. And I knew that I saw the image that needed to be on it. And I, I just started bawling and, and you can't deny that. Like, no. okay, that's the book I have to write. And that was the book that I wrote. And it came through in like three months time because God just channeled it right on through. And that's why I want everyone to experience this. If there's a book in their heart to have God show you visions, to have God write words, you're like, I don't even know what that word is. So I'm going <laughs> to Google that real fast because that's not my word. And then you're like, oh, that's a real good word, God. Good job on that one, <laughs> right? Like nothing's better than that experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, well, that was just one of those, like, I, I know I like cried through it and it was just like, oh my gosh, that was truly inspired by something beyond me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for your book, that title. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Thanks. I'm so excited. Now I just need to, I think I just keep, you know, I get been pushing, pushing the, the inspiration away, but now it's, it's time. Um, yeah. yeah. So I got to dive in and do it. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for you. That's well, so thank beautiful. you. Thank you. Well, this has just been amazing. Um, I mean, beautiful soul doing beautiful work in the world. So I, I feel mm. so blessed to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. This has been so delicious. I so love having these conversations. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's been wonderful. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. Uh, and remember, until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening today to the Healing Place podcast with your host and trauma warrior, Terry Welbrock. If you enjoyed this episode and want to learn more about Terry, her mission, and the Hope for Healing journey, visit Terry's website at www.terrywellbrock.com. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and offering your reviews on our YouTube channel, audio outlets, and Facebook page. And as Terry reminds us, until next time, remember, be gentle with yourself.